Wow, that's the $64 million question. What do I think of Kazoo? I think the markets have fallen out of love with Kazoo because I don't think the markets actually understand their business operation. I think generally there's a lot of people who have a lot of respect for what they've done. If you take your eye off the ball and you, you, you decide to ignore Kazoo, then I think you ignore them at their peril, really. Consumers are used to buying everything online these days, from the weekly shop to new fridge freezers. But buying cars on the internet hasn't caught on in quite the same way. Kazoo is one car business that is hoping it will. The firm has been shouting the loudest since it arrived on the scene with a bang in 2019. I'm James Baggett, I'm the editor-in-chief of Car Dealer magazine and I've been reporting on the new online car dealer since they launched. In this video, I'll be chatting to car retailers, finance specialists and motor trade experts to find out if the self-titled online used car disruptor really is the future of car sales. In the space of just a few years, Kazoo has grown rapidly by snapping up a host of motor trade businesses. It's blown millions of pounds on sporting sponsorship deals and advertising and gone on to raise billions on the stock market. Its marketing promises it will revolutionise the car buying experience in a £500 billion market that it believes is ripe for disruption. But who are the people behind this new online car dealer? Where did the idea come from? And will Kazoo ever become the dominant dealer in the used car market? In its simplest form, Kazoo is a used car dealer that sells its wares on the World Wide Web. Started by serial entrepreneur Alex Chesterman, the man behind Zoopla and Love Film, it's raised huge sums from investors. But for all the tech stories and internet buzz, behind all that clever marketing is a firm with a simple aim – to sell used cars online. Why then have they stoked up the motor trade into such a frenzy? Peter Smythe is the director of the Swansway Group. Like everybody, I have got um, particular um, opinions on Kazoo. Um, I don't, actually don't believe they are what they purport to be because they purport to be a disruptor. I first of all don't think they're a disruptor because I think they are, and very quickly have started to follow the same model that um, the, the standard motor trade has been using for the last nearly 100 years. David Kendrick is head of automotive for accountancy firm UHY Hacker Young. They've got a significant budget that I don't believe anybody in the UK motor industry has, has seen on the scale that they have. They've raised an awful lot of money and they've, to some extent, come from nowhere very, very quickly. I think people are interested in Kazoo for two big reasons. One, because of Alex Chesterman. He's got a proven track record in disrupting whichever industry he's working in. And secondly, because the name Kazoo is everywhere. They're interested in Kazoo because someone's come up and told them that they're doing things wrong. No one likes to be told that their multi-million pound business is wrong or that they should be doing it better or they're not good. And Alex Chesterman has not been afraid to get up in people's faces and say that in the national press. So how does Kazoo work? And what makes it different, if anything, to traditional car dealers? Kazoo, in my mind, is a used car dealer. I mean, they primarily operate online, but they are essentially a used car dealer just like any other dealer in the UK. Kazoo, in theory, works very simply. They've got a big website. People can type in to Google online used car dealer and probably Kazoo would be the first brand that pops up in Google search. And once people are on the website, they're able to search make a model, they're able to find their exact car, and they're able to order that car online. Jack Williams is Car Dealer Magazine's staff writer, and even bought a car from Kazoo himself. He was impressed with the efficiency of the car dealer startup. Well, first and foremost, it was a really good deal on a good car. I got a Fiesta ST Line 2018, uh, reasonably priced, and first and foremost, I needed it quite quickly, it was just before Christmas and um, my other ass car had just packed up. Um, and the turnaround time was really good, I think it was three days. It was really good, they made a big big song and dance over it, we came in, the car was under a cover, they pulled that off, you know, a bit cheesy, but it was, um, it was a nice touch. Got a call after a couple of days just to make sure that everything was, was okay with the car and, you know, really well looked after.
In its early stages, Kazoo went through a series of huge fundraising rounds. Led by its mysterious founder, Alex Chesterman, private equity firms ploughed hundreds of millions of pounds into his new venture. The Daily Mail Group was one to jump on board in the early days, pumping in 110 million. Kazoo then went on a shopping spree, snapping up a host of motor trade businesses. It hoovered up subscription firms across Europe, starting with Drover in the UK, then Cluno in Germany, both for undisclosed sums. It then added Swipe Car for 30 million euros from Spain and Brum Brum in Italy for 80 million. In between, it acquired used car data specialist Kazana for 25 million, splashed out 70 million pounds on fleet preparation firm SMH and gobbled up the lesser known commercial vehicle site Van365 for 6.5 million. But it was the purchase of car dealer group Imperial Car Supermarkets in July 2020, just eight months after launch, that really set industry tongues wagging. I think Kazoo have been very clever and very canny in the acquisitions they've made over the past two years. I think the biggest surprise was when they purchased Imperial Car Supermarkets because here is a business that shouts of, of the fact that it's online and it does things purely in a digital space and yet they bought up a car supermarket group. Curtis Hutchinson is co-host of the Motor Trade Radio podcast. He's been reporting on the car industry for decades and has watched the Kazoo story with interest. That did come as a surprise to, to many in the industry because suddenly uh, a, a company that really was presenting itself as an online specialist had physical capacity. Neil Smith was Operations Director of Imperial at the time of the deal and later went on to work for Kazoo. He met me outside the former Imperial site in Southampton to chat about the acquisition and what it was like working for the used car disruptor. Let's talk a little bit about what it was like when Kazoo took over Imperial. I mean, firstly, were you surprised at that deal? Um, <clears throat> surprised at the interest in the early days, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd had communication with Kazoo um, back to February 2019, uh, only because I knew a guy had started there. Um, knew a little bit about them, but yeah, when, when it sort of came to pass that there was interest, yeah, that was pretty surprising, really. But what did Kazoo want with Imperial? Uh, probably four main factors, none of which are what the industry thought they wanted with Imperial at the time. Uh, one was the distribution network that we had across the UK, so it allowed them to uh, use our sites for internal distribution and then sort of final mile delivery. The after sales piece, so we had uh, built up an after sales network across the UK and that was of interest to them. They were in control of the customer journey up to the sales piece but then lost control of it, so that was the second element. Uh, third element was really the ability to utilise our sites probably as very large billboards, uh, you know, from an awareness piece. And then beyond that, it was uh, allowing them to, uh, I suppose, offer a click, click and collect option to consumers who weren't either able to take delivery or would rather go into the site and understand what the business was about. What was it like working for Kazoo? Uh, intense, uh, enjoyable, different. Uh, you know, coming from a traditional used car retail background, moving into what is ostensibly a, a fintech company uh, that happens to sell vehicles, uh, understanding or trying to get the grips with that mindset uh, was challenging. Because you know what they're doing. They have a real, obviously they know what they're doing. They're gonna, they, they sold between 40 and 50,000 vehicles last year. Not sure of the, certain, the exact number. They've got projections for 100,000 this year. They can sell vehicles. You know, the model is based on five years in, in terms of the projections and five years they'll be turning a profit. What do you think Kazoo have done really well? I think the, the development of their technology, the way they've built that platform, uh, obviously brand building, phenomenal brand building, uh, the marketing uh, around the brand, uh, you know, normalising that process uh, for consumers now. Consumers that, again, we at Imperial never thought that we would be able to sell cars purely online. What would you say to any doubters who are, who are doubting Kazoo? Um, I think what I'd say is you've got to give them another two to three years to make good on their, their original sort of projections and the model. You know, this is, this is a brand building exercise at present. It's, they're building volume. Uh, you know, the trade can continue to knock the fact that they're not a profitable business at the moment, but 
any of these disruptors in the early years, especially the, the type of disruptors we're talking about. You know, you look at Uber, you look at Facebook in the early days, none of them made money. It was about building that business. And if you, if you take your eye off the ball and you, you, you decide to ignore Kazoo, then I think you ignore them at their peril, really. Ignoring Kazoo is something that's not easy to do. The firm has splashed out on a huge number of sponsorship deals since it launched, as it looks to build its brand. It's put its name on the shirts of not one, but two Premiership football teams, with Everton and Aston Villa. Golf, snooker, cricket, horse racing and rugby have all got used to Kazoo branding. In fact, it's sometimes easier to list the sports it hasn't sponsored rather than the ones it has. It's estimated Kazoo has spent more than 150 million on sponsorship deals and blown just as much on advertising on TV and radio. But has it all been worth it? Catherine Fairs is the Chief Operating Officer of Autotrader. I think for any new player looking to build a brand and looking to get consumers to purchase what is a very expensive and valuable product or asset online, having a big consumer brand um, is helpful because the trust and the confidence you need in consumers to going to go on that buying journey with you matters. Jim Holder is the editorial director at Haymarket Automotive, publishers of consumer titles What Car and Auto Car. I think they've been very effective. Uh, I think the awareness of Kazoo uh, is incredible now, and I think to achieve that so quickly uh, has to be a testament to the amount of money they've spent. I think the key, of course, is it's not sustainable. Uh, so they have to do enough to have a lasting impact as well um, if they want to be at the front of people's conscience. James Hind is the chairman and CEO of online new car disruptor Carwell. Kazoo's founder Alex Chesterman was an early angel investor in his business. I think it's it's an approach to building a, a brand and business very, very, very quickly. I don't think it works for the majority of people. Um, you can't get 10% of their effort with 10% of their impact with only 10% of their spend, for example. It is, I think, I believe, a, a kind of all or nothing game for them to build that brand quickly. Kazoo have poured a lot of money into those headline sporting events, which millions of people tune into. Whether those people actually say, hey, I've just tuned into the Kazoo Grand National and I'm going to go and search for my next used car using Kazoo, is, 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 a, is another matter entirely. But Alex Chesterman and Kazoo have been very clever at targeting those headline events. Kazoo founder Alex Chesterman has done his best to live up to the disruptor name. He elbowed his way onto the car dealer scene with a blitz of publicity that wasn't exactly complimentary about the traditional motor trade. In interviews with the national press, he accused car dealers of a complete lack of online penetration. He said that women buyers feel particularly disadvantaged, and he claimed the existing car buying process was flawed on every level. It had the desired effect. It made plenty of headlines and stirred up a bitter rivalry with existing car dealers. What do you think about those comments? I think they're quite naive. But that's not why he's saying them. He's saying them because that's what the general public think about car dealerships. Anyone who knows about these sort of things knows that's not true. I think they're pretty brave comments to make when you really dig down and ask yourself how much Kazoo has disrupted uh, the processes that he's talking about and really how much it has changed them. Uh, I think he's the world's best salesperson. Um, alongside Donald Trump, I actually honestly believe that he's the world's best salesperson because he has been able to convince investors in the United States to value his business originally at $10 billion when it had sold a handful of cars and was obviously hemorrhaging cash. Mark Lavery is CEO of car dealer group Cambria, which represents brands including Aston Martin, Jaguar Land Rover and Lamborghini. I, th I think he's, he, he's raised an awful lot of other people's money and he's trying to sell something that he's doing very differently to everybody else. And, you know, fair play to him. I think what he's done for, for most of us in dealer world is just make us sharpen up, wake up 
and understand that we're going up against somebody who's incredibly well resourced, whose economics don't work quite the same way, and um, has made us make our omni-channel offering a lot more efficient. Alex Chesterman declined the chance to be interviewed for this feature. What cannot be denied is his ability to build successful online businesses. And it's this proven track record that has seen cash flood into Kazoo. With a net worth of £750 million, Chesterman was on the Sunday Times Rich List, generating his fortune by disrupting the film and property markets. He made £20 million when he sold Love Film to Amazon in 2011 and then pocketed £200 million from the £2 billion sale of Zoopla in 2018 to a private equity group. He had a 30% stake in Kazoo, but he is rumoured to have cashed in at least £100 million of those shares. In interviews, Chesterman said he was drawn to the used car market because it was too enticing. He says he has a passion for finding stuff that is broken and fixing it. But uh, I think he has this sort of slightly mythical uh, reputation now uh, and, and the fact that you know everything he touches supposedly turns to gold so you know he's kind of in my head a slightly shadowy figure and I suspect he quite likes that. I think Kazoo has raised so much money because uh, Alex Chesterman is, is somewhat of a genius um, he's obviously a very very good marketeer very good salesperson he's put a very credible prospectus to investors um, we've seen Kavana in America um, become a Fortune 500 company, I think, in recent times. And, and ultimately, the online digital evolution of retail is, is very much prevalent in the market at the moment. Well, I think he could have raised money with whatever he was doing, whatever sector, because of that track record and, and the rarity that, that of that kind of track record in London. However, one thing that VCs look for is size of market. And there's no denying that the used car market is an extremely large market that hasn't, in the grand scheme of things, been changed by the internet that much. That track record saw Kazoo become the fastest UK firm ever to achieve a $1 billion valuation, dubbed unicorn status. Six months after launch, a £365 million funding round valued the online dealer at £2 billion, despite registering a loss of £19 million in its first set of published accounts. A year later, it listed on the New York Stock Exchange when it reversed into a special purpose acquisition company, or SPAC, valuing the company at $7 billion. Shares have tumbled since, though. At one point, they were down 70%. Mike Allen is motor industry analyst for investment bank Zeus Capital. The, the Kazoo SPAC is based in the US and essentially what it is, is it's, it's um, a five year, three to five year business plan, um, a high valuation that you get up front based on those very uh, public forecasts. And that valuation allows them to raise a large amount of capital. And a large amount of capital is needed to, to set up and disrupt an industry from a blank sheet of paper. So it's almost it's almost the other way around. So a lot of PLC dealers will generate their own profits in cash to fund expansion, whereas with a SPAC, you're getting that pretty much from day one, um, you know, based on a business plan. Basically, um, it, it's an existing shell company that's already listed, um, and Kazoo is reversed into that in the US. Um, and it's, it's probably a slightly faster way of listing um, than the traditional methods. Uh, and as I say, I think the reason that they chose the US is because um, the US investors are going to value this opportunity more highly than UK investors. It may have had a huge valuation when it listed, but Kazoo's share price fall hasn't gone unnoticed in the motor trade. Shares in similar listed used car businesses, like the US-based Carvana, have also been hit. But Kazoo's drop has raised questions as to whether investors have lost faith already. I think the markets have fallen out of love with Kazoo because I don't think the markets actually understand their business operation. When you look at the Kazoo plan and um, what they base their initial raise on and valuation, um, 
some of those numbers look a stretch and look quite challenging, coupled with the supply issues that we're facing around the, the global automotive industry and the fact that that's likely to continue probably for the next 12 to 18 months. So I think there's a number of external factors. I'm probably not qualified enough to say whether the market has lost confidence in their plan, but certainly they're going to have to deliver some results to underpin that, that initial valuation. Kazoo's cause has been helped by the fact there are now other online disruptors on the scene banging the same drum. Cinch, owned by the company behind Auction House BCA and We Buy Any Car, is gaining rapid traction. The Constellation Automotive Group has recently had a huge cash injection and it quickly spashed out 325 million on the listed dealer group marshals. It now has the motor trade full house, an auction house to dispose of cars, a consumer website to buy cars, a dealer group to help it source even more stock, and a disruptive online sales platform. For many in the motor trade, it's actually Cinch who are the ones to watch. Hoax. For me, the one to be watch and almost be fearful of is probably Cinch. Because now they've got they've got the supply with we buy any car, they can dispose via BCA. And they've now also got a retail motor arm with Marshall. Uh, listen, I, I think Cinch is by far and away the most professional, far more vertically integ integrated than anybody else. Because, of course, they've got the power of Constellation Group behind them with access to We Buy Any Car and BCA stock. Um, and as you know, we were we were very early on to the platform and we found it uh, hugely beneficial for us as a company. Uh, I think Cinch have a lot of the components that will help them significantly, both from what they had traditionally with We Buy Any Car, BCA, obviously, but also the acquisition that they made in Europe with Car Next. That is a large scaled used car retailer across continental Europe. That's a very, very, very big move. They're the biggest threat, but there's never going to be just one used car dealer online and, and competition is good. And you've got a lot of um, big companies like Arnold Clark that do, do the role very well at the moment as well. So they're, they're a threat, but I think there's room for, uh, room for, for all of them. But for Kazoo to really succeed, it needs online used car sales to become the preferred choice for a large majority of car buyers. It's likely helped that the pandemic saw the rest of the industry catch up as online sales became the only way car dealers could do business during lockdowns. But will visiting a car dealership in person soon become a thing of the past? To a certain extent, I think Kazoo's been a success already. They've come quite a long way in the past two years. Um, Will they take over in the motor trade? I think the answer is no. I think a lot of people will use uh, a hybrid of perhaps searching for their car on Kazoo, perhaps coming to their local dealer and using the information that they've gleaned or the experience that they've had through Kazoo and use it at, at their nearby dealer. So I don't think they're going to sweep up, but I don't think they're going to go anywhere anytime soon. There's a lot of people who have a lot of respect for what they've done. They've done a lot of things that were happening already, but actually to be shouting about it is something the motor trade wasn't very good at doing. Between the pandemic and um, the big changes in how we all how we all buy things, um, so many of um, the consumer journeys that we're seeing and experiencing are online ones, and that's no different in automotive. So while there may be many in the motor trade watching and waiting for them to fail, should Kazoo be doubted? I would be very wary of doubting Kazoo. I think they've come a long way in a very short space of time. I think you just have to look at the progress they've made already. You know, I think there was a lot of um, almost mirth at some of their early figures, some of their profit per car uh, numbers, some of the figures relating to the marketing they were spending to get the share that they were. But I think, you know, they are on an exponential curve. They do have customer awareness. They have incredible trust pilot scores. They are going to be part of the mix. 
My gut instinct is yes, Kazoo will succeed. But I don't think it's going to be this year or next year. I think this is, when you look at brands like Carvana, um, it took them like 10 years to get to where they are. So I just don't think that car dealers should look at the sort of figures that they're getting at the moment and write them out because they've got the cash to keep going and not making any money um, until it does work. Kazoo may have rattled a few cages, but quietly most car dealers will admit they've caused them to up their game. Most believe that while some may be happy to click and buy their cars, there's just as many customers who still want to poke their nose around a forecourt. So are digital used car sales here to stay? Will they one day take over as the dominant sales channel for the motor trade? I do think people do want to buy things online. Fundamentally, they like being able to at least do a large part of the process online. It's going to take a while for these things to actually iron out all those little problems and understand how the customer journey can really be kind of smoothed out and made really, really simple. But once it gets to that point, I do think more people will just think, oh, it's easier, I can just do it from home. I think that online will, will grow and grow and who knows where we'll be in 20, 30, 40 years, but certainly as the younger age come through and buying everything online, certainly I think it will, it will grow and grow. Mike Jones is an automotive consultant and former chairman of accountancy firm ASE Global. Omnichannel is the future for the car industry. I, I think that customers have a very individual view as to how they want to buy a car, whether it's a new car or, or a used car, and they want to be able to do things their way. Now, that in, will involve some component of, of digital, um, and it will un, involve some component, for the, for the vast majority, some component of physical. I think they're going to be a part of the future. I know everyone you know, likes to wheel out the omni-channel uh, catchphrase, but I do think there's a truth to that. I think for most buyers, uh, a digital journey will be part of their purchase. I think for an awful lot of them, the complete journey will not be digital only. Unquestionably, digital sales are the future of the car industry. Whether they're going to completely take over from the traditional dealership model I think the answer is no. We are going to have this hybrid model where the dealership is going to become ever more digital and a lot of processes and transactions are going to be online. But physically being able to see cars in the showroom, touch, feel and take them for a drive, it's been a, a, that's how the industry has operated for decades and that's how it will continue to operate in the future. The pandemic saw the car industry take dramatic digital leaps forward. As lockdown struck, online sales were the only way car dealers could keep the wheels turning. And as a result, the industry saw years of digital development in a matter of months. But as the pandemic subsides and the motor trade goes back to some levels of normality, there's new battle lines being drawn. On one side are these pure digital businesses like Kazoo that are betting billions that an online only model is the future. The rest of the car industry, meanwhile, is concentrating on refining a hybrid model that they hope will be able to capture even more buyers. The battle, it seems, is only just beginning. For more features like this one, make sure you subscribe to the Car Dealer YouTube channel and our podcast. And for the latest on the industry, visit cardealermagazine.co.uk for daily updates.